Happy Monday. I uh, hope everybody had a nice weekend. Uh, we certainly did here. And um, kind of uh, reset these next couple days, <clears throat> figure out uh, what our plans are going to be, trying to get on the practice field for a few days this week, give the guys a few days off, give the staff a day or two off, get to the state championship games, um, try to get to those out in California and Arizona, <clears throat> and then uh, start recruiting. Start recruiting. We'll have the uh, banquet on Sunday. Then we'll find out where we're going, and then we'll start uh, recruiting next week and then start bowl practice the following Friday. So uh, looking forward to what's uh, on the horizon. Obviously, it's a great time to be a Wildcat. A lot of people want to be Wildcats right now, so that makes life good when it comes to recruiting. And um, our guys are certainly excited to get going. We'll have a meeting today. We'll review the film. We'll make whatever corrections we need to make. And then um, we'll get to it. Um, after watching the Territory Cup film, what stands out to you when you look at just the way Noah was able to perform? Uh, well, we threw the ball really well in the game. That's for sure. Uh, had a couple opportunities that we missed that you know, certainly had a chance to probably have a touchdown at the end of the half that we just didn't come down with the ball, um, that third down play, and then threw an interception on the five-yard line, which we should have hit Jacob for a touchdown there. Um, outside of those couple plays, I think uh, he was pretty close to perfect the way he played. Uh, one of the ball that Jacob didn't come down with was a, was a perfect, perfect ball. Um, the decision there on the goal line was not. But um, you take those couple plays out, he was as good as any quarterback that I've been around uh, in regards to decision-making, in regards to accuracy, getting out of trouble, completing the ball down the field, completing the ball mid-range, and, um, I mean, obviously finding T-Mac, finding Jacob, finding Tanner, finding Mike, uh, all those guys had big, big games. For Tanner McLaughlin to pass Gronk, how do you respond to that? Yeah, super cool for him. Uh, we still got another game to play. I think he has a chance to set some more records, from what I understand. If we can get, I think, five more catches or something to that effect, then it could be an all-time maybe season or uh, whatever it might be. But he, uh, he's been great since he's got here. He's been here a couple of years and came here as a walk-on, and <clears throat> we were able to give him a scholarship. And then once we gave him a scholarship, uh, he never changed. He just kept getting better and better and better and doing things right and setting the tone on what it means to be a great leader and what it means to be a, a really good football player. Two questions for you. Um, two weeks ago, you got a re reception for Roberto uh, Miranda, the first of his career. This last week, you gave Nas Mobata uh, his first career carry. Why is it important to do that sort of thing? Well, I think, I mean, the, a lot of these guys will never play football after the bowl game. Um, now, Roberto probably has another year left, but it was the first time that his parents were in the United States, first time his dad was ever here, and it was senior day. And um, those things matter. You know, they, a lot of times people question why you do something in terms of, you know, whether it be throw a ball at the end of the game or try to get, a, you know, another completion for or a touchdown for Jaden or a completion for Roberto or a handoff to Nas or get Cole Tannenbaum in the game to take a knee there at the end. But you do it for the kids. And, you know, this isn't a professional sport. This is college football. And these guys, a lot of times, won't have another opportunity to live their dream. And they work every single day to be able to have one chance to do it. So it's really important to me that if we have the ability to do it, based on the score, based on the circumstances, or based on the game, we can do it. My second question is, um, you know, they're expanding the college football playoff next year to 12, it's still four this year. But if it were 12 now, you guys would be in the mix. I mean, you might have a chance. What, what are your thoughts in general just on the expansion of the playoff? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great to expand it. You know, I think four is too small. Um, there's no question every other league, every other um, sport has more than four teams in their playoffs. Uh, you know, I was thinking a little bit about college basketball today. You know. It, they go into the postseason and they just have 60, whatever, 68 teams now. Go try to win a championship. You know, we are regular season ends, and if you're not one through four, 
you know, you don't have a chance to win the championship. So, you know, I mean, imagine if it was just the four number one seeds in basketball, and those were the only four that had a chance. Uh, it's just different, you know. It's that we play less games. One loss means more. Uh, and then to not be able to have a playoff, more than four. Uh, this is great that we're expanding it. <clears throat> and uh, if it was two years ago, we'd be playing Friday night. And, uh, you know, when, they, when we had Pac-12 South, they still made sure we scheduled the Pac-12 South. We had a Pac-12 South schedule. We played all the teams in the Pac-12 South, and then we played, you know, some of the teams in the North. And uh, if that was the case, we'd be playing on Friday night against Washington. But uh, they made that change. And uh, just like they'll be making the change next year for a 12-team playoff. Well, beyond those those four bowl games, uh, the, or the, the playoff, you often will see guys maybe consider not playing because they're thinking about the pros or whatever. Have you had any discussions with any of, the, of your guys about not playing in the game? And do you anticipate that happening? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's probably going to be one, maybe two guys that don't play in the bowl game. Um, due to either NFL circumstances or injury, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, I think if you're a first rounder, I could see it. Uh, I could see not playing in it. I think that uh, other than that, <clears throat> I think most guys will play in it. <clears throat> it's an opportunity to showcase your skill one more time. I think you have to take a little cost benefit analysis. I think some people take a step back on that. Um, but we talked a couple guys about it, most guys I'm expecting to play. And, uh, and, and that's, I think uh, it's everybody's choice. But this is a big time game we're going to. You know, I would assume we'll be playing in one of three games, you know, probably one of two games, I guess. It, if Oregon and Washington both make the college football playoff, then I would assume we'll probably play in the Fiesta. If uh, maybe uh, otherwise, I assume we'll be in the Alamo Bowl. Or something to that effect is what it looks like. And those are big time games. And uh, you got a chance to be in a special game. And uh, if that's the case, then I would think most guys want to be in it. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Noah and T Max connection all season, really coming into its own last week. What did you see when you were recruiting them back at Servite? And how has that connection developed in your eyes since they've been here? Yeah, I mean, I think we've. You know, continue to talk about those two guys. I mean, I mean the story is the story, right? They played together since eighth grade. They're best friends. They've uh, had a great connection in terms of where they're going to be on every single play when the ball's in the air to go attack it. But um, <clears throat> I think that they're both separately very good players too. Uh, sometimes we're just kind of like combining them, and they're, one's not good without the other. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Um, T Mac was a uh, phenomenal player last year, phenomenal player the first four games of this year. Uh, Noah has obviously played extremely well since he stepped in. Uh, having T Mac as a um, as a receiver for him is obviously something special because they've done it for so long. But in the end, um, you know they they find each other, they work together with each other. But uh, you know they're both independently outstanding football players, not just collectively. Two questions for you. Uh, number one, you guys haven't lost a second quarter scoring margin within the six-game win streak. Just a coincidence or an emphasis going into halftime that you have to win that second quarter, that second 15 minutes? No, I think that's just a coincidence. Uh, we try to win every quarter, <clears throat> um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think that... That hasn't really been anything that's crossed my mind regarding the second quarter. Uh, I try to hold the ball as long as we can in the second quarter to be able to end with the ball in our hands. Uh, we had a chance at it the other day. We wound up missing a field goal, missing a touchdown, missing a field goal. That was very disheartening. You know, we could have been 41 to seven or 45 to seven. Uh, I would have liked that better. But other than that, you know, I don't know. It's just probably been circumstances had an opportunity to develop so many young players within this program, but a lot of people talk about December and those bowl practices, how crucial they are for young players. How much are you looking forward to developing some of the younger players in this roster that don't necessarily get the same work in the week-to-week, game-week practice? Yeah, I think that's a great question. We're, uh, <clears throat> we're looking forward to at least the first four or five practices being heavily focused on the young players on our roster. 
and a huge focus regarding, you know, how good we can get these guys, uh, you know, how much we can uh, improve over that time. And then the last two weeks prior to the bowl game will be like a two-week Super Bowl prep. Uh, that'll be, everything will be all game plan based. So we'll have about four to five practices that'll all be about fundamentals and the young guys and getting the young guys better and improving. And then we'll have what ends up being eight practices and 13 days of meetings and whatnot of uh, all about the game. Uh, two questions. First off, already today, tons of transfer portal action and all that. Do you have conversations with players this week? Do you wait to after the bowl? How does that kind of work with the guys on the roster? Yeah, I mean, they would have to come to me and say that they would want to talk about that. I'm not really looking to seek them out uh, regarding the portal. Uh, I don't necessarily believe a lot of our guys will want to enter in the portal. Um, I'm sure there's always going to be a couple um, that either don't envision themselves being able to become a starter here or don't envision themselves becoming number two on the depth chart here and want to go to try to do that somewhere else. Um, there's other guys that may, you know, seek an opportunity elsewhere due to circumstances beyond our control. But I don't necessarily envision a lot of guys coming to me these next couple of weeks, but uh, I'm sure there'll always be some surprises. And then on Saturday, we, we asked you about your contract and all that, but you also have a, a coaching staff that has been successful as well. How do you handle maybe other schools contacting assistants and, and things like that? Yeah, well, before I get my contract done, we're going to make sure that all the coaches are taken care of here. Um, all the assistant coaches uh, will try to certainly compensate them accordingly. Uh, we understand uh, it's a very competitive atmosphere out there in the profession. And um, the most important part of my contract is that our salary pool for our assistant coaches continues to increase and that we're able to keep our staff in check. Uh, it's been very, very important, uh, the consistency of our staff, which has enabled us to win. So before I worry about myself, I want to make sure we take care of them. Jed, two questions. One, the prevailing thought after the game was how in the world did the best player on the field in Tetsuro McMillan get so wide open on so many different instances? After watching the tape, how would you answer that? Well, we... Uh, <clears throat> He's really good, number one, so he's a really good route runner. He's found ways to get open against anybody. Uh, number two, we moved him around the whole game. We put him in a, about every different possible spot you could play in, whether that be through motion or through stacked alignments or bunch alignments or uh, to try to get him different uh, so they can't really find where he was at. And um, the guys made a ton of plays uh, for us down the field, intermediate, uh, in the screen game. And uh, we just continued to do that during the game. And obviously, the first two years you were here with no bowl game, you were able to bring in NFL teams here to practice for a week ahead of games on the West Coast. Is that in the plan this year? Yeah, I don't think we can do that this year. Um, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't anybody that, that I knew of that were coming out here for that time period that needed a place to go. And um, we didn't really market it uh, with the idea that we're probably going to have to use uh, our practice space, and uh, it's somewhat limited. So uh, it worked out well that the first two years, the Giants and the Patriots were able to be here, but this year uh, we'll be using it during December. Uh, from the Territory Cup game last year to, to this point, how would you summarize the, the journey of the program and how you guys were able to, to get to this point? Yeah, we're in a good spot. <clears throat> you know, we've, I would say uh, we've won 11 of the last 15 games we played, something like that. Uh, 11 out of the last 14 games we played. We were 2-1 and one to end the year, and then 9-3. and three. So 11 out, of, 11 out of the last 15. Um, I would say that we've found a way to continue to improve each week. Uh, we improved in the offseason. We improved in the winter. We improved in the spring. Uh, we kept adding talent. We kept developing talent. We kept getting bigger, stronger, faster. And then from, from all those areas, you know, you wind up finding a spot where – You've got a lot of guys that can contribute, and the guys that left the program or couldn't stay at the program, um, you know, opened up opportunities for others. And during this time, I think that we've just gotten better. 
And uh, I just think we'll continue to get better. I think we'll be better next year than we are this year. And uh, I would hope that our team is just getting started uh, in this, what's called winning ways. And um, that we can really go through the off season and go through the bowl season and go through the spring and just see how good can we get. And uh, keep challenging our guys to see uh, that this past season is not our max, but it's pretty cool to end the season with a 6-0 and record. And how do you look back on coaching a bowl game as a head coach? Yeah, well, I did it at UCLA. I was the interim head coach during that time, so I had the whole bowl experience. Um, Chip wasn't involved at all during that time. They hired him you know, after we beat Cal, but he stayed away from the team for those four weeks and let us finish it. So I did have that opportunity uh, as the head coach for the bowl game against Kansas State. And uh, it's certainly a fun experience. You get to do everything you can to provide for these kids uh, circumstances that they've never had before. You know, there's a lot of cool parts of a bowl game, especially the ones that we'll be heading to, that uh, hopefully we can make it a great experience for the staff, the families, and the kids. Thank you.